Hi folks, welcome to my Pit Retro Journal. Um, this is another video for Marchintosh. What you see in front of you is uh, my Macintosh PowerBook 180. I got my QL on the back. Um, what I'm trying to do is um, create a phone network to connect the modem on the PowerBook to this um, Vocal 2400 stowaway. Now I finally figured out how to connect it to my QL. Um, it turns out I only needed four wires and I'm using one of these um, uh, phone to db25 and on the back of the ql db9 connectors it just needs four wires um and what i'm connecting is ground send and receive and then uh the other wire i'm, I'm running from the ql is on on normal qls it's pin six because i have a us and the german qls and i have a db9 connector because normal qls their serial ports are just a six pin these european phone connectors but on on the us and German version, you have a DB9. So pin 9 gives you 12 volt signal, and it turns out these modems that don't have any power otherwise use the DTR signal on pin 20 on, 20, on, on the 25 pin connector as the 12 volt. So I got it working. You can see in the back ATZ, it's running at um, 1200. I can actually change that to uh, F1 to high for um, 2400, and again ATZ working <clears throat> um on my macintosh i have a z term let me start that up um i have some issues w with regard to and this is going to start up now uh, with regard to z term um i'm not sure why it's not uh it's trying to catch up here i think it went to sleep there it is um notice when it starts up it's going to ask oh it's actually uh okay yeah um because i've got it already configured but if i um do modem preferences um if i try to choose so the first time i started up it basically just said the modem port is not available please choose one of the other ones and if you choose printer port it'll just say error 97 while trying to connect the printer port and basically all you have is you can just choose a modem port and that's it um <clears throat> the yeah the the modem port the, the modem port actually never comes up now when i boot this with extensions off again i can't choose anything so I, i'm frustrated because i mean even though this works this is um what do i have uh, i think i should want to set this also to uh, uh, uh 2400 um <clears throat> Um, so this does work, um, but what if I want to use a different modem? How do you deactivate the internal modem without actually having to take the computer apart? So anybody know with the PowerBook uh, 180 or the PowerBook uh, series, how do you disconnect the internal modem so that I can actually use the serial port? Because I can't with Z-Term. I haven't tried any other uh, terminal programs, but Z-Term is supposed to be the best. Um, but I don't know how to do it, so it's kind of frustrating. Um, so I have to use the internal modem. I uh, can't even do a direct serial to serial connection, at least not with Z-Term, because it won't, it, it won't ever see even the modem port. And it might have, with, with extensions off, it might see both this, the modem and serial port, but they're just used. Um, and again, with extensions off, that means you're not using local talk. So I don't know what's going on. Now, does this work? If I go AT, uh, A for attach, you can see that it's going to make a sound. Yeah. Now I can turn that off. ATM0. I remember my, I, I, I kind of boned up on the um, Hayes command. So ATA. You can't hear it now. Um, on my setup, what I have is I've got the modem connected to this modem. You can see I have a sort of a double one and then I piggybacked into the double one. And on this, I have this landline phone and then i have this connection right here that goes to a nine volt battery with a potentiometer that's currently set at um i, I measured it it's set at 275 ohms and that actually kind of works um and I'll, I'll show you why so if i do this again ata if i pick up the phone nothing 
But now if I plug in the 9 volt battery, this is going to sort of pretend to be a phone line because the phone line actually has 48 volts running on it at a very low current. And so people have discovered that if you do this, let me see if it's in camera. If you do this, uh, and, and again, and I know this looks like a convoluted mess, but basically you have, uh, uh, I think it's the, the, it's the red and green, yellow and black. I think it's red to this, to this. So it's all one connection. And this does add, now, if you can see the phone, watch this, the light comes on. Now, there's no dial tone, but if I do this now, ATA, so the phone can pick it up. So there is, it, I now basically have a mini phone network. Here's the frustrating part, uh, and I've been working this for a long time. Again, if if I do ATA on the on this modem, um, ready? There's nothing, and so the two can't communicate because the way it's supposed to work <clears throat> is that this. He's going to get no carry. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go ATA on this one and ATD, and you hit him at the same time. And then this starts this. This is supposed to start as carrier, and this is supposed to start its like detection. And then they're supposed to. Yeah. I'm trying to think that the moment it dials out, waits waits for the signal of the of the receiver, and then it starts communicating. So usually ATA makes it makes the first connection. And it just doesn't work. Now, if I go the other direction, ATA and ATD, same thing. Again, both set at 2400. And I'll do it twice, once with lifting the headset up. You'll see that this is making the noise, but this never sees anything, right? So, so it is on. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, 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 the only thing I can think of, either this modem is broken or it requires because it's an unpowered modem it's getting 12 volts to run the modem on the on the um the computer side and then it needs 48 volts to uh, maybe do some detection and unfortunately this doesn't have an internal um speaker so it, but it makes no noise uh, i mean you can kind of hear it's, it's doing something but it's just not doing the ata as expected it just says now, now a few times if you do it it'll actually say um uh, without anything, it'll actually say connect to 2400. Yeah, see, it said no dial tone on, on the ATD. So it's smart enough to detect the difference. But <clears throat> at ATA, you'll see that sometimes, and, and sometimes if you change the, I can change the bar to slope, and I can go ATZ. So, sometimes changing baud rates, it does this really weird thing where it says connect it. Uh, but it doesn't make any sounds and it doesn't connect to anything. So I don't really know what, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but it's just not working. Now, if you think it's the QL, I did the same thing on my iMac machine using this, uh, serial to USB, which works beautifully. Um, and, um, clear, clear terminal, I don't know what it's called. And again, it does exactly the same thing, same behavior as on the QL. So it's, it's this modem and this is the only one I have. Uh, separate. So I think my plan of connecting my power book to my QL over a phone line, because I, remember, I, I also have those RCA um, um, uh, wall plug, which I really wanted to try to see if I could have this MacBook sitting in a different room going over this once I create this temporary little network using a 9-volt battery. <clears throat> but I'm not even there yet. And um, so unfortunately, this modem here, which Again, if you look at it, it actually really matches the QL nicely. And um, I was really excited once I got it to work. Um, but it just doesn't work. And again, it's only 2400 baht. If I go and do, so it's uh, slow, normal. So if you look at the top of the, I don't, know if you, I don't know if you can read those or not. S for 300, N for 1200, H for 2400. So it's slow. I mean, I, I wrote this program. And it, it, it's actually designed to work on the NTSC uh, TV mode. That's why you get the whole screen. If I did this in monitor mode, there would be a huge blank spot on the bottom. Now I have the code and I can recompile it. 
Um, but, um, you know, and I, and I have since actually reworked it to, uh, you know, cause I use this on some of my videos. So I, I recompiled it to create a new interface for it, but you can see that, uh, I can set, like if I set it to V for very high, uh, V for very high at 4,800. Now you're going to get junk because you know, the modem doesn't, it, it can go as high as 2,400 baht. So you go for H for high. Um, I guess back in the day when I wrote this, uh, 1,200 baht was kind of the norm. And um, uh, 20, 25 was high and then very high. And what did I call it? The uh, extraordinary high, 9,600. Um, but yeah, so um, unfortunately I cannot, and, I, and I've used the serial port on this to connect with my Wi-Fi modem. I did a video of that a while ago. I'll put a link on it here. But, um, but yeah, uh, so I do have another option, which is I have my, um, uh, my Dell Inspiron 8600 with, from 2004. And I love that computer because it's, it's, it's sort of my first professional computer. And I say professional because it was actually given to me. I worked after finishing school I got a graduate degree. I worked for a startup and that's the first computer they gave me, which is in 2004. Um, and it's literally 20 years before the, after the QL and 20 years before now. And it's running Windows 7, but it has everything you want. It has a serial and a parallel port built in. It's got Wi-Fi. It's got USB. It can, uh, it has a CD ROM or DVD player. It can even run the latest Firefox and still run YouTube videos. <clears throat> and uh, I think the 8-bit guy did a thing where he showed that uh, computers are, you know, in 2004, if you went 10 or 20 years back, you couldn't really do a lot. Whereas now you go 10 or 20 years back and the computers can still do quite a lot because the curve is slowed. And, uh, so I can use that because it actually also not only does it have an Ethernet port, but it also has a built in modem. And so if this is the modem that's broken, um, I might be able to, um, uh, cook this to that. And that's not the same as hooking into my QL84. So it's 20 years later, but modem is modem. And if I can't get this to work, maybe I can get this computer to hook to my my Dell. Now again, I call my Dell my first professional computer. I call my QL my first real computer. And again, after this, I got my Mac 2 SI, which is very similar to this, except it wasn't the portable. That's probably my first modern computer uh, because I had it for 10 years. And um, I wouldn't say it was mainstream because it was Macintosh back in the early 90s and they were still kind of a small percentile of computing. And most of it was IBM PC. Um, but still, I, you know, I could actually buy software and hardware for it. And then after that, I got in, in the early 2000s, I got an IBM ThinkPad, which I consider my first mainstream computer. Uh, so modern, but also mainstream. And then the Dell was right after that in 2004. So yeah, it's kind of interesting that I'll be hooking my, my first modern computer or equivalent because this is, uh, I think this is a 33 megahertz and the 2SI was, um, 20 megahertz, but I clock doubled it to 25 megahertz. And so they really feel very similar. And I, the more I use this power book and having fixed the screen, and I think I left my computer on for 24 hours last night trying to work on this. Nothing's coming back. So the screen is beautiful. And this is just a gorgeous machine, um, that I use more than just for retro stuff now. I mean, you know, to some extent, obviously I'm not surfing the web, but I think I'll do another video where I kind of show you, uh, talk a little bit about that. But yeah, so I think I'm going to try to hook this 1991 computer to my 2004 computer, which is kind of right on the cusp of, you know, 20 years ago. Again, it's pretty modern, but still kind of retro-ish. Uh, like I said, it's a good bridge computer. And again, all I want to do, and maybe the only the time I have left, because I, I was going to do a bunch of stuff, but maybe all I can do is just get that telephone network to work so I can hook modem to modem on the computer. And then eventually I'll, I'll, I'll maybe have a future video depending how long it takes to um, see if I can uh, uh, hook this through the house lines using those RCA um, extenders. Okay, so uh, I'm going to have to come back to set up my other computer. So let me do that and let's cross our fingers that we can get this phone thing finally to work. All right, I'm back and I've got, uh, this is my this is the, my Dell Inspiron 8600. It's in pretty good shape. Um, you can't see uh, this part, but the wrist palm, those were worn and I actually replaced this top cover. I found a cheap uh, replacement. But other than that, it's the original. 
um, really like this. This was actually also, um, uh, again, if I close the lid, you can see in the back, uh, I've got the connection to the, uh, to the uh, modem port and then just added another line, but it should work. Um, it has two serial ports in the back and, um, I copied over this, uh, clear terminal program using a USB. Again, just a normal USB stick. It's not USB 3 or 2. I think it's probably the slowest. But let's give it a try. See if it works. And I still have the things. So this still works. But let's... Um... Oh, uh, the other reason I like this computer is because uh, if you liked the TV show Stargate Atlantis, it was these... Uh, you might remember... They had, I think, a different logo back here for Stargate Atlantis. But this is the, these are the computers they used for Stargate Atlantis. And so it's, it's kind of one of my favorite um, sci-fi shows. And so it's kind of cool. But yeah, so let's, uh, let's, um, run this. And again, it does, so clear, clear term is kind of cool, but it does have, uh, um, let's see if we can, uh, can we change settings, colors, and fonts? Can we do, Change foreground color to black. Change background color to white. This makes it easier to read on the camera. That's why I'm doing it. Yeah, let's give that. Let's give that. Uh, change command color to like a uh, like a maroon. Uh, Give that a try. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, let's try that. Is that a little better? Let's let's see if this actually gets the um, a. Uh, oh, we haven't done the connection yet. So now let's do a connection. New connection. Com. So com one is the actual has a physical com port. So com three must be the modem port. And let's put this at um, twenty four hundred baud, just because that's what the other modem is set at. Let's connect. Okay, let's see what we get. AT, yep, that works. Look at that. So uh, what we want to do is, well, let's see if I do an ATA. I'm going to hold this up. Well, I'll do this down and do ATA. Yep. So it does work. That's good. All right, ATZ. ATM0 in case it makes noise. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do ATD on this one. And I'm going to do ATA on this one. And let's see what they do. Let's see if they connect. Um, I would I would guess they're both 2400 baht, so they should connect to 2400 baht. Uh, I don't want to pick this up because it might ruin it. Um, but let's see what uh, what we get. Oh, carry. 1440. Connected at 1440. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. So it picked the highest one it could, and not the 24 that we started with. So does that mean... Yeah, you can see this actually comes out. I don't know if it's blurry or not. I'm trying to focus on that screen, so I don't know if this one's going to be blurry or not. But if I go... Um, let's see. Uh, if I go... Yeah, you can see that it's there and I can go control J. Yep. And I can, that's character transfer. New line is J. Yeah, look at that. Uh, can we do? No audio. What? Is that going to beep? Yeah. <laughs> so this one doesn't beep. Funny though. Anyway, so I got the phone line connected using this nine volt battery. So that method works. Modem to modem, that's pretty cool. Um, what, um, yeah, I, I think um, as this video is starting to hit its um, end time, um, I wanted to connect the RCA jack ones, but I think I'm gonna end here um, just because I wanted to uh, um, see if I can connect 
Yeah, again, more interesting would have been connecting this 1991 computer to my QO's 1984 using this modem, but um, unfortunately this modem isn't working. I don't know if it's broken or if because it's not powered, if it needs some more some different voltages on this side. Um, if, if you know, if you have any idea about unpowered modems and creating your own network, um, I'll do a future video where I will um, play more with the idea of a phone line and um, uh, try to get this over the power, uh, you know, the um, straight through the wall plugs uh, in different rooms and see if I can get that to work. Um, the one concern, of course, is that I can't access the modem and printer ports on my power book. So since this is Marchintosh, if somebody could sort of explain to me what's going on there would be really helpful because, you know, even though this machine, I can do both um, SCSI a CD-ROM and I have a floppy disk, um, you know, using a serial connection um, is kind of important. Not that I'm going to hook it to a printer or anything, but why with the internal modem is it just locking both of those up even when i turn extensions off that part i don't know but at least i know the modem works and i know this idea of a creating your own phone line using a nine volt battery and a, about the 300 i think i have 275 ohm resistor um works and it's it's kind of cool so can, you can create your own sort of in, intercom system i do have another phone so i might play with that as well um, I don't want to pick this up because if I do, I bet I, I, the, the connection ceases again. Let's see if... Ah, that's cool. I'm controlling that computer. So, I'm going to end here. Thanks for uh, joining me today. And uh, please watch some other Martian Tars videos. And I'll see you next time.